Hello, hello, and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2. And for a change, I thought I'd start off by taking a look at some of the mining, pr uh, processing and production that's been going on as the first part of this episode, and then get on to the sort of the story and the spoilery stuff a bit later on. And the first part of that that I want to look at is the beryllium production. So you might remember that last time we saw that we were very, very short of beryllium. There were all kinds of problems going on over in over in Norbit and on Norbis. We didn't have enough beryllium coming in, and that was that was stopping the production of astroscience and a few other things as well, like uh, low density structures, which then go into just about everything. And so, in order to upgrade that, well, I've um, I brought out some better modules. So I've now put tier six modules in all of the machines down here in this processing area, including inside the uh, in, inside the beacon. So this this area now runs more productively, which means for any beryllium or any barrel ore that comes in, we're now getting significantly more beryllium out at the other end. And you can see this rather full belt coming down here. Well, it's completely full on one side, but it is only a red belt. And then, fortunately, there's a, a side balancer here that means any um, any ore that does come along here on the up on the top side will then be put onto the bottom side and it will be able to get out. So I don't think we're actually restricting production anywhere along here. Um, and up here you can see, well, there's a little bit of a uh, blockage here, but it's not too not too much. And it, well, Yeah, there we go. It's disappearing quite quickly. And the reason we're getting it all on the one side of the belt here is because I'm running it through this chest here to provide a little bit of a buffer just in case we ever get to the point where we're producing more beryllium than we actually need. And so I've also tried to upgrade over here as well, but I didn't have enough modules with me because producing enough tier six productivity modules is astonishingly expensive. It goes through enormous amounts of all of the uh, the Vitamalange stuff. And at the moment, we just don't have enough for that to work. So currently, well, I haven't been able to do much of an upgrade over here, but I've done, I've done what I can and everything in even the worst areas are still, still on tier three. So it's, it's not too bad. And also we have a lot more uh, barrel coming in now for reasons I'll get into in a moment. I also took um, a, a couple of spurs out of the warehouse over here and fed it up into these systems up here because when I started off, these were running significantly more productively. They had better productivity modules in them than the systems down here. That is no longer the case because they've been upgraded, which is why I've now let, let the belts run off to other places as well. But previously I was prioritising trying to keep these systems running even when there wasn't enough core fragments coming in. because. We're still very, very short of core fragments over here, mostly because of the upgrade I did. So we're now instead, we're now running much, much faster. We've got two green belts coming in instead of I think we had one, maybe two blue belts coming in before. And so now we just can't. The, the, the mines can't keep up. Now there are quite a lot of other core seams around the planet that I could go out to, like out here and, and so on. So I could expand this out quite a bit further and get a lot more core mines. However, given that it's a bit slow at the moment and going out and setting these up is quite a long and drawn out process, especially when I'm just sort of flying out there laying all the rail by bot it takes quite a long time to do and I don't think that makes particularly good stream content so I've sort of I won't say I've abandoned that but for the time being I'm not planning to put in any more core mines even though that would clearly be the right thing to do I could possibly go over to the other method of expansion which is where you just put out enormous numbers of roboports and run an entire string of roboports and rail all the way out to the uh, to the core mines you want to dig from and that that does work the only problem with that and, and we've discussed this before the problem with that is it's incredibly slow because you're putting in a little chunk down here of one roboports range then you'll have to wait for the bots to fly from over here with the uh, rail and the roboport for the next bit which I'll put in here then once that's placed you then have to wait for the bots to fly from over here all the way over here with the next chunk and so on so if you're not in a hurry then sure it, it, it works that it will eventually get your, your your rail systems out to wherever you're trying to go to but it's not. It's not. An, it's not ideal. It's not a great way to expand your system out and uh, I'd rather so I'd ra I don't really like doing it that way if we had file installed, of course, then I'd be able to just fly across the landscape in a file train and uh, and just deploy everything really, really quickly. But that's it's sort of slightly cheaty. It's also not something we've got installed in this playthrough, so we're not really planning to add that one in, even though it would make that a lot easier. So instead, well, I still need to have this system running nice and quickly, and we do have a warehouse full of barrel over here, so clearly something is working. And so there's a couple of things I've changed here. One is that I've extended these to one two one two trains, which I did last time with the uh, with the core miners as well. Uh, now I've done it with the normal mining tra trains as well. So they can they can now bring in twice as much per train, which means as a train pulls in, it then takes a bit longer to unload. You can see while well, it's unloading there, and now it's now it's departing. So the next train's then going to be able to pull in. There's a lot more available. So this means even with all of these belts emptying, the, the warehouse is still at only just under 500 stacks um, by the time the next train load comes in. And so this means each train brings in a lot more. Therefore, the unloading and the swapping of around of trains is a much smaller amount of the time that's taken do doing everything with the trains. 
And so, yes, we've got a decent amount flowing out here, and we can keep these, these belts all running constantly over here. As part of that, of course, and I touched on this last time, I've upgraded all of the mines, like this one up here, to have, um, well, the warehouse, and then enough loading belts to load up four, all four wagons at once, uh, with, a, with a gap here for the other locomotive. So this will now, this is now capable of loading on those 1212 trains. And in order to allow this to, to fit in, I've also removed the second station that was in here that was bringing in the filters. And I've not actually removed all the belts and filters and stuff around here. All of this could actually go at this point. Uh, I just haven't got rid of it yet. But the filter handling system is now gone. We don't need it anymore. We've plague rocketed the planet. So there's, essentially there's so much pollution on the planet that we can't do anything about it. But it has killed all the biters, so we don't have to worry about attacks. And these upgrades, well, they, they help with the, with bringing all of the ores in. Yes, that's 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 certainly true. However, they, they didn't increase the amount of speed we're digging it up out of the ground at, so I still needed to go out and put in some more mines. So, I did that, and I think I touched on this last week as well, because I said I was going to do it. So up here, I've put the, I've, I've made the, the uh, railway line go round this uh, nice convenient ore patch here, and I've slapped down a load of mining drills. And because this is a healthy, healthy patch, I think this was about 15 million, 16 million at the moment, in fact, um, I've put in a speed beacon in the middle of it, so it's making all of the uh, all of the all of the drills that you can see flashing at the moment. They're all running at four times their normal speed, and they're getting a plus 120 percent productivity boost because of the uh, the researches we've been doing. So that's even better, and that means the station over here fills up pretty quickly. So as soon as a train is ready to come out and grab some more uh, grab some more barrel ore, it can do so. Take grab it from here, take it away, and that's how I've managed to get lots and lots of them queued up. I did also put in another another uh, mine up here. This is a long, very much the same system. However, because it's bigger, I did put in two beacons, but then I ran out of speed modules, so I haven't managed to put any uh, modules in this beacon, which is a bit of a shame. But oh well, it's um, at least it's there, and when I come back with more infrastructure, I can set it up next time. And so again, we've got the drills running at four times speed up here. The ones on the edges are running at normal speed, but or actually less than normal speed. Uh, and that's all being pumped through into, into into the warehouse here, and it can then be picked up by the trains. Lovely. And with these two being up here a bit further away, they're probably not going to get used quite as much as some of the other ones. However, that said, we've already got another train pulling in here ready to fill up, and this is going to take probably seconds to fill up. You can see how, you can see how quickly that's going. It's um, a quarter full already. But then the, the other mines are probably running a bit slower. So this one down here, um, we've got, we've got, actually we've got 188 stacks in there. So that is enough to call out another train. Although we haven't actually triggered the station yet. We're, we're triggering on 12,000 rather than whatever is exactly the right amount to go into a train. Uh, so soon that'll get up to 12,000. We'll then call a train over to here. But these ones are, are a bit slower, as you can see. And they're running out. There's only 3 million left over here. So I don't think it's worth coming in and shoving in a speed beacon to make this one pull it up a bit quicker. And the same over here. This is, a, this is doing slightly better. It's still got 7 million left. Uh, but it's and it's slightly it's got a slightly bigger area of barrel. But because we've pulled up all of the stuff around the edges, all of these drills have stopped running. That means that now we've got we've not got as much coming out per per minute, should we say? And so this one's nearly ready for another train to come out to it, but it's not quite there yet. So we'll give it a little bit longer, and then eventually a train will come out and grab the barrel from there. So whilst we do have several other mines going, and they might actually be closer uh, to the to the departure point up here than the new ones I put in, the new ones are running so much faster that I think most of the barrel is going to come up from there. And we can see this on the production graph. We were pre previously producing about 14,000 per minute, and that includes the stuff that's coming out of the core processing. Uh, then there's, it broke a little bit while I was upgrading it, uh, and then carried on running, and then now, well, it was able to spike up to 32,000 per minute, uh, and now it's sort of idling at around tw around 20, in the low 20s at, at the moment, as we're, as we're churning through it. And we can see over here, similarly, we've been producing it, we've been using it up at about 13,000, and then that jumped up to 21,000. So this seems to be about the speed we're capable of using it at, and that works quite nicely. All these spikes you're seeing here are probably are either going to be from mines filling up and therefore stopping working briefly until a, a train comes out to grab some, or they're going to be from a train coming in from a core miner and therefore we'll, we'll be producing a bit of extra barrel from the core processing. As part of this, I needed to add in a better uh, stacker for the trains over here. So I initially had room for well, there were probably there's probably room for about five trains up here when they were short, and then the tra and then there was a bit of a sp little spur of track coming out here so the trains could come in. Now, because the trains are longer, but I still need to have lots of them because I've increased the amount that's flowing through, I've now got room for one, two, three up here, and then an additional two on either side of this piece of rail over here. So that gives me a t room, room for a total of seven trains parked in here. And at the moment, I have seven trains, so it's exactly the right number. And it means so, so this means that even if we stopped producing beryllium, perhaps because we had enough, we filled all the buffers up, the trains would still all be able to come in and park here without causing any sort of train jams. Now, the, if, if we do fill up on beryllium and we don't, and therefore we don't need to have, have anything running over here, uh, we don't really care if we get a train jam out here or not, because basically the only thing that 
the trains are doing is bringing either beryl ore from the mines or beryl core chunks from the core mines to the processing area over here. Nothing else is happening with the um, with with the ground trains on this on this entire planet. So it wouldn't really matter if it jammed up, but I'd still rather it didn't. And so this will make sure that that doesn't happen and that our trains will always be able to flow wherever they need to. So the beryllium is coming down here. As we said, we've got half a red belt plus a little bit more flowing into the warehouse, then going into the train down here. That's filling up quite nicely. If we look up in Tal Orbit, well, the trains will come up here, they'll unload, and get, it'll all go into the into the spaceship, as you're very, very familiar with. And we can see this spaceship is it's about a quarter full. Um, is that a good thing? It's hard to say. The fact that it's still unloading like this does make me think that the spaceship hasn't been here for all that long. So, that, that, so having a quarter in there already is probably quite good. If we look over in Norbit, we can see that the, uh, there, there, yep, there is a train full, and then there is still some here in the in the station. So 38,000, that's 383 stacks. That's about three train loads, almost four. So including what's in the train, here we can we can run this train four times before we have an actual problem and the fact that the train is sitting here happily and idle means that the systems down on the ground have enough beryllium at the moment so everything does seem to be working at the moment we seem to have enough as of right now however as you saw the ship has rel only relatively recently got back over to Talos and therefore it's, it's going to take a little while to fill back up again um, we'll have to wait and see whether this is whether there's enough buffered in here that the spaceship will be able to come back and drop off a load more and therefore just carry on filling up all the buffers in here. This is a rather different state from what we were seeing before when we had basically all three of these warehouses filled up and we had more beryllium than we knew what to do with. But that's the way Factorio goes. You expand the factory, you start using more resources, you need to generate more. That's just, just how it is. I mentioned that we were struggling for productivity modules, and you can see that over here. We've got the uh, the inputs of all the various bits and pieces, for, or most of the various bits and pieces for making the productivity module. So we can make the fours, uh, except we can't because we've run out of whatever the thing that flows along the bottom here is. We've run out of vit vitamolange extract, and then we've also run out of vitalic reagent. That's always the one we seem to run out of. And so those will need to, but those will eventually, when we get some more of them, will flow through here, and we'll be able to start the the, uh, the production of more modules. But looking along here, you can see we've got three tier six modules and twenty seven tier seven modules. So yes. We we have some, but it's not very many. It's not enough to upgrade all of the buildings I've been trying to upgrade. So we just we'll just have to gloss over that for now, at least until we have a, a train come in over here with with lots and lots of stuff in it. And we can see there is a train over here in the bio pickup at the moment that is currently filling up with um, with stuff. What have we got going in? Well, we've got lots of the extract flowing in. We've also got lots of these things. What are the oh yeah, bio scrubbers going through. We've already run out of reagent. That's already all just been taken away, and probably a lot of that has been taken out of the top here and has flowed down this belt. Yeah, this this belt here. To to go off to be turned into Naquium. So yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of demands on that, but uh, Mark has been improving that and I'll talk about that later. But here we can see the train is filling up. There we go, the train is departing. Where is it going this time? So it's going to Vitalic Reagent Drop. So that means it's going to go in over here. It's going to go, oh dear, I can't drop off any reagent over there. Uh, never mind, I'll head off again. Like this. Pull it pulls in here. It hasn't got any reagent. It's only got the extract and the bio scrubber. So the station goes, Welp, you're no use, are you? It sits there for five seconds. Once it's had the inactivity, it will then go over to the uh, bio, the uh, space module city area. So now it's going to head off from here and make its way over to the module production area where it will try and unload all kinds of different things. So we do need, we need lots and lots of different things here. And well, to be fair, we've got two of the things, it's, the two things it has brought are things that we need and therefore we can start unloading those here and passing them through. But until we get more of the reagent, we're not gonna be able to make any more of the tier six modules. Maybe I should try and satisfy myself with tier fives and just fill up the beryllium system with tier fives. And then if and when in the future we get enough, um, enough vita everything to get the tier sixes, I could then upgrade them. To be honest, this is probably, it, it might be easier just to wait, but at least we've got some production production going on over here. The other thing I did on Talos was put, to put in this little stone buffer here, and that was because I noticed that there, was a, there wasn't very much stone on the belt coming up to the uh, pulverizer up here that makes all of the sand for all of the beryllium processing, and the pyroflux that's required for lots of things around here. Uh, and However, there seemed to also be quite a bit of stone going along here and being fed out to the uh, dis disposal matron over here. And so I thought, well, okay, let's put in a let's put in a little buffer over here so we know we've always got at least uh, 2,400 stored in this box before we ship anything away. And as you can see, we're slowly dribbling it in on this belt. And that means we do, we do actually have plenty. We are producing it faster than we're using it. And all of this is coming from the core fragment processing. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to have this as a buffer in here, because quite a lot of the time, the core fragment processing isn't running because we've run out and we're not digging it up fast enough. So every so often we'll have this burst of production over here. We'll have loads of, more, of vanilla core fragments and stone coming down here, which we can then turn, pass through this, and get ready to and pass up here to be turned into sand. But then there could be quite a long gap between. And so having some stored in this chest over here means that we can just keep it running when we have shortages. 
The next area to look at is still on Talos. Yes, I spent a lot of my time on Talos in the last stream. Uh, and that's this is the Naquium processing area. So we've got our train here that's bringing in the crashed Naquitite. It's passing down, it's being processed down into Naquium ingots and Naquitite crystals over there, or possibly vice versa. And the first problem I wanted to look at here was the, it was the sulfuric acid. And so pre, in the past, we found that um, the system has been generating sulfuric acid merrily from the, uh, from the machine here. That makes it from uh, sulfur and iron. Great, we can put it into the tanks. It can come over here to be made into the red beads. They flow through the system, yada, yada, yada. It turns out, though, that with the, uh, with the type of productivity modules I had in here, with the, um, the amount of sulfuric acid being produced by this stage from vitalic acid is more than this being used up by this stage. So that meant we had more sulfuric acid being generated than we were using, and therefore the tanks over here were slowly filling up, which is why I put in a second tank over here to take the, uh, take the excess. This wasn't previously a problem because we used to take the sulfuric acid away from here in order to make the beryllium, uh, so the beryllium hydroxide that was coming in on a pipe down here to go into another stage of the processing and that was taking enough of it away that we didn't have a problem. However, I've changed the way the systems work a little bit over in the beryllium area and that meant we eventually jammed up here and the whole system stopped working. So to prevent that from happening again, I've put in a pump over here and that's set to pump away whenever there's more than 20 in these two tanks, which is why you can see uh, 9.9 thousand in each of them. And that will take it away and that's ended up the pipe over here where it will then just be fed into the uh, beryllium processing system up here with this pump. And that means we're, we're using it up as, as we have some excess available. And at the moment you can see this pipe's empty because we pushed it all through. But as we get a little bit more through, through from the Naquim processing, we'll push it through and it'll get, it'll get used up over here. So in a way, we're sort of doing the same thing, just in, um, but only as an overflow instead of producing more of it. This meant that over here, we now basically don't need sulfur, sulfur or iron, but we're bringing in enormous quantities of them along here. And we ran into a problem where we had so much iron and sulfur stockpiled that this whole pass-through system along here jammed up and it looks like it's jammed up again we've still got because we've got still got holmium cables in here but they haven't been passed down to here to go out along this belt and be taken away to, to where they're needed because this warehouse is completely full and as you can see if I sort it you can see that most of this is iron and sulfur and we actually don't need this and so in an attempt to improve things a little bit I put in these three boxes over here with uh, filter inserters inserting into them to take out some of the sulfur and some of the iron but even having done that that's still not enough because I've got such an excess over here in a future video we'll get rid of a load of this in a rather more effective way but for the moment we just have a serious problem with it all jamming up in, in here so I think the way to fix this is going to be to put in another copy of that over here like that uh, and then we'll get we'll be able to unload another couple of um, chests worth of there we go like that and now there you go you can see now you can see the holmium cable is starting to flow through because the, because there's plenty of it up in here there's 7,000 in this warehouse it just couldn't get through because this warehouse down here was so so full the rare metal is a little bit of a similar problem in that we've got well we've got some in here we've got quite a lot of it in here we've got 10,000 in here but if we can get rid of all of this then we'll have plenty of room and that is at least still being used because that's coming down here and being made into nitric acid which we do use but we need Need to, yeah, but we need to, we need to have room amongst all of the the rest of the stuff in order to get that through. I should also come in here and link these two chests into this warehouse here, and that means any iron or sulfur that gets put into these chests and into these ones because I've linked those in as well is counted in the total amount that we see on this planet and therefore we won't if we uh, try and order some more or if another ship comes over it won't bring over more sulfur or iron just because it's been taken out of these warehouses and put into these chests so yeah the system the system is now is now working you may note an empty belt here which we, this, this one is fine because the vitalic acid comes down here and, well, there's, there's some barrels of it left, in fact. But then that's brought down and put into this tank down here. And we're watching how much vitalic acid is in this tank, dividing it by the amount that goes into a barrel, and then outputting that as barrels onto the network. So the amount of acid in here is counted against the number of barrels in the system. So we're not just storing them in the, it in the warehouses up here. So that belt being empty is fine as long as this tank doesn't start to empty. We also seem to have a bit of a shortage of vitalic reagent, but that's okay because there's 17,000 in this warehouse, so we aren't actually in a crisis position yet. We're also a little bit short of methane ice, and that is potentially a little bit of a problem. Uh, we don't seem to have any coming along here. Uh, if we follow this belt along, then we will eventually get to this warehouse over here, and there's still none over here. Uh, we have, yes, we have a fairly severe uh, methane ice problem at the moment that we're going to need to do something about, potentially by bringing more of it over from Stardust, but I'll talk about that in a, in a moment or two. In fact, it's such a big problem that the Naquium production has stopped. So yes, it has hit crisis levels now. We need to we need to find more uh, more methane ice in order to make more methane gas to allow this stage of the process to run. However, even when this entire system is running absolutely flat out at full speed, we've decided it's still not fast enough. We're using the Naquium up in space in over in orbit a lot quicker than we're generating it over here. And so our answer to that was to very simply copy this 
and paste it in over here. Now there've been a few changes made over here. So you'll notice that a lot of the fluid processing has been removed. So we don't have we don't have this nitric acid generation area that we've got on the edge over here in this area because it was easier to just run a pipe along the top here carrying the nitric acid and feeding that in as it's required. We don't have anything dealing with sulfuric acid. We don't have anything dealing with the nitric acid either because again, those can be brought over by pipes and in, in and out as required. We're not generating the, the pyroflux because again, it can be brought in by a pipe. All of these ways that it's much, much easier to bring these things over because they're being made in much, much larger quantities than they're actually needed in. So over here, we basically just have the uh, the actual Naquin processing and the bits making the, uh, the the various beads to go with it as well. So we've uh, we've managed to slim the system down quite a bit and uh, and um, just produce the the, uh, the actual important bits we need. There are a few problems with this. The first one is obviously that we've run out of methane ice and therefore methane gas and therefore it just can't run at all. So yes, that is a fairly severe problem. We also don't have the productivity modules we'd like to put in here. Uh, these should all be tier sevens all the way through because Naquium is so valuable that we want to just make the absolute maximum we can out of the input we're bringing in. Uh, these are actually these, however, are tier sixes, which isn't bad. Uh, I haven't quite got enough of those, but we've got quite a lot of tier sixes in here, which is is still pretty good. So instead of getting a productivity buff of eighty percent over here, well, we're getting somewhere between seventy percent and fifty six percent, depending on how many modules we manage to shove into the machine into those particular machines. But those are still pretty good numbers. It's not a, it's not too horrible a, a, a drop off. But I would like to upgrade these as soon as I can once we have a bit more uh, vitalic reagents in order to allow us to make the tier sevens. But the other more severe long-term problem is that, well, I've discussed a number of times in the past how this one purple belt over here is, runs at 90 items per second, which is the same speed as the combined processing over here. So where we've got the um, the eight belts coming out, because there's another copy of this uh, uh, higher up. We've got eight belts coming out and then dividing by four as it goes through the pulverization stage over here. So we've got two white belts worth coming in here, mythically spread across four belts, which is 90 items per second, and then 90 items per second being taken out on this belt. And and also 90 items per second being taken out on this belt as well now. So that's that's 180, which is more than 90. And so eventually we're going to run into a problem with this. However, it was pointed out to me by, I think by Mark, that we have quite a lot of spaceships all stacked up in, in orbit here around Talos, trying to land and looking at the text here, I think that's at least three of them parked up there. Plus one in orbit that's trying to unload. And that, ooh, that's got a little bit of methane ice in it. That's, that's good news. And then, well, there's currently a full warehouse down here and most of a train because we because this, this is, the system isn't running at the moment. So yeah, we we need we do need to get the system running running up up and running again properly. And eventually, having it running at 180 items per second going out and 90 items a second going into the whole logistics system is eventually going to be a problem. However, there is a huge buffer to work through before that becomes an actual problem. And if the Naquim facility keeps breaking down like it has at the moment, then there's loads and loads of opportunities for everything to catch up again. So at the moment, um, the, the processing is, is the problem because, because it keeps breaking. So we can speed this up and it's going to be okay for quite a long time while we churn through all of this, um, all of this excess. In the, uh, in the longer term, we are going to need to bring more in, and my plan for that is to go out to another um, asteroid field somewhere out here and use an Arcolink uh, teleport chest to bring all of the stuff we need from wherever, whichever um, asteroid field we use back down and drop it off on the planet over here, and then I'll probably, ha I'll probably have the Arcolink chest in, may maybe somewhere around here, uh, just because there's a convenient gap, and then I can have a massive rank of pulverizers down here, or possibly up here, and that will provide all of the crushed naquitite that's needed for these machines over here, and probably another copy of it all over here, or perhaps underneath it, or just somewhere around here I can put in another copy, and maybe even another copy after that. We'll, we'll have a think about the numbers. But yes, I can get a lot more flowing through once I go out and set up another mining area, but in in the meantime, while that's happening, we can work through all of this buffer by having twice as much processing going on down here. And I think that'll allow us to hopefully keep the systems over on Norbit satisfied at least for a little while. Uh, hopefully doubling the amount of Naquim coming over is going to be enough for them. Of course, putting in all of this extra machinery, especially given how much of it is, is, far, is run by uh, speed beacons, including the beryllium processing and the beryllium mining, meant that we were using an enormous amount more power than we were before. If we look back over the last 10 hours, well, our production's got, just trust me, our production's gone up. It was, it was about five, we were using about five gigawatts before, uh, and so I've upgraded it now to allow us to produce 8.3, and sometimes, it, particularly when the Naquium processing is actually running, you can see some spikes over here. This got up to uh, needing six gigawatts from there at one point, and now we, and at this point, we're using 4.6 from that one and 3.2 from here, also, so 7.8, so nearly all of the available power. So we, yeah, we had a massive increase in the amount of power required, and so we started to struggle. 
This meant that we had brownouts down on the planet here. Everything started to run a bit more slowly. More seriously, the uh, the signals were signal receiver over here failed because they're the first things to go when you lose power. And because I hadn't set this up at the time, I hadn't set this up properly as a less than zero check. This meant that when the signal died, we started pouring through enormous amounts of Naquium crystal into the warehouse here. And because of that, we have rather a lot more Naquitite crystal over here than we than we than we than we want or really know what to do with. You can see over here that the um, this well this warehouse up here is completely full. This is full. The train is full. Down here, this one is as full as it'll go before it gets cut off. And these even these ones down here. Are Two thirds full. So that's a lot of Naquitite crystal we've sent over, and it's a lot more than we should have over here. Whenever we run out, we should send over potentially up to 20, 30,000, but that's only when running out means when we have less than 5,000. So we should never get to the point where these warehouses have anything like as much in them as they do, even in the sort of the absolute worst case scenario. So this is all quite bad, really, uh, and we're going to need to do, get some science done so we can churn through some more of this crystal. But unfortunately, until we get more Naquium ingots over, we can't do that, and we can't bring more Naquium over until we've got more uh, methane ice and yada, yada, yada. So it's a little bit problematic at the moment, but hopefully it, it should sort itself out because I don't think anything has actually jammed along here. So so yes, up in space, I drastically extended the um, the, the solar field up here in, in Tel Orbit. Uh, this was harder than you would expect because we have, at the moment, Mark is getting through absolutely phenomenal quantities of these red solar panels, and I'll show you why later. Um, but that, mean, that meant that it was really, really hard to get all of these together, so I ended up uh, taking the emergency option, which was to steal all of the Naquium solar panels that we have. Now this is probably not ideal because Naquium is expensive, as you've seen, and we don't have as much of it as we'd like to. However, I had a, a bit of an emergency over here. I needed to get a lot more power in. And these do, each each one of these will produce twice as much power as one of these will. So I put down a load more of those, and as you can see from the power graph, that meant that suddenly we got this spike here and suddenly we have enough power. Now we do, as I say, currently this is a bit low because we're not actually running the Naquium production. We'll have a look at it again later and see how things are actually going in, the ne in uh, next week's videos probably. Over in Norbit, Mark has been getting through massive quantities of AI cores in order to make these uh, matter, uh, matter assemblers and also uh, matter um, stabilizers, basic matter stabilizers, singularity reactors, and dimensional anchors and 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 so you can you see we, we've suddenly had an enormous draw on the AI cores and we weren't making those remotely fast enough so if we follow the belt back it'll come it comes all the way down down here uh, okay yeah we, we, we still have a shortage of them it turns out uh, but then we can follow this over here past this station and it was over here in the biological areas that we were having shortages and therefore we and things weren't being made fast enough so Mark came in and he took a bit of a look at this and it turned out the main problem that he was having over here was that when he set it all up, the ratios were opt optimised for science, are his words. And that means that he was producing all the things that were needed at about the right speed in order to produce all the things, things that you need to make all the biological sciences. And because we're doing Bioscience 4 at the moment, if, or we were doing Bioscience 4 in quite large quantities, uh, we were ripping through that fairly quickly, and that meant that the system over here wasn't able to keep up. So, Mark has done some expanding and we've now got enough of things. So there seem to be enough quantum processors coming in. That's that's nice to see because those have been a problem for quite a while. He also seems to have managed to get a lot of reagent. Um, I think that's because he's, he's higher up the priority list for that train than the uh, than the, the, the module creation area is. And we seem to have a decent amount of Immocyte around as well, which is nice. Um, looking over here, the advanced neurogel has now caught up. So if we, if we follow that back, I, th I believe he's been putting in more machines. So he's got more machines probably here making advanced neural gel, which means there'll be more machines down here making basic neural gel and so on and so on. So he's essentially... He's He's topped up everything that was um, that was there was a shortage, and down here that we we had a shortage of these bio samples. I remember. So he's he's done a load of expansion down here for all of these things, and that means that now we can have enough of the bio samples flowing through to keep the to keep the goop running, to keep the um, to keep the neural gel running, to keep to keep the advanced neural gel running. And so yeah, you can see down here these machines are working quite hard in order to fill these pipes up, uh, and that's then all being brought up to here in order to be made into the AI cores. Now we do seem to still have a slight shortage along here, and that is the um, the, the Riddler data that's coming through on this pipe, uh, this this belt, from somewhere down here. Now it is flowing through at a reasonable rate. We're seeing quite a bit of it on the belt, but it's not quite as quick as we would ideally like it to be. And over here, is it due to any shortages, or it just, it's just, no, it's just processing speed. So over here, we could perhaps put in a beacon or some upgraded modules, or we could just put in more machines out at, going out this way, uh, and make this whole system run a bit quicker, and then we get a bit more of, those, of these data cards coming through, and we'll be able to run, process, run the process a bit quicker. It also seems we're a little bit short of these ones as well, however, that doesn't seem to have been actually a problem yet, because all these machines up here making the tier 3 catalogues, they seem to be pretty happy. And, and I suspect any of these that aren't happy are probably unhappy because of the lack of the Riddler data, rather than the lack of the... What am I going to describe this one as? I don't know, is that a United Nations logo? It might be. 
Uh, so yeah, there's there's lots of things coming through. There's lots of things that use up these data cards, and therefore we need to have lots of things uh, producing them. And so I suspect that a good way to fix this would be just to take this this beacon here. We could put this in here, and then that would speed up all of these machines and this machine and the machines across the top making the uh, making the catalogs. So everything will now run quite a lot quicker. So something like this would would make will make a big difference, and then hopefully we'll have enough Riddler data to make more enough AI cores to make everything that's going on. That said, I mean if we look back over here, we can see that actually we do seem this this is further back than it was now. So maybe we just had a flurry of activity, a flurry of use, because I know Mark has been making a lot of the singularity reactors up here in order to uh, for the the Stargate. We'll talk about that later as well. Uh, so maybe now that that's maybe now that we've finished making those, this this will get a chance to catch up. We'll wait and see, I guess. Down on the ground, Mark has drastically increased the rate we're making lithium chloride at. So that means we're bringing in a, a belt of a belt of stone over here, green belt, nice. It's coming here. It's all being pulverized down into sand to make the hydrogen chloride. To then um, make, uh, and then we've got, oh, yeah, got mineral water in here, I remember, and that makes uh, lithium chloride, uh, which we can also make lithium from and lithium chloride. Both of these are being brought out because we need both of those in large quantities. But there, the lithium goes into a station to be taken away because that goes to quite a few places. The lithium chloride is, on the other hand, is then just brought down here, added to the massive bus that goes down to the uh, the, the space trains area, and then passed into whichever space trains it, it is that needs it at the moment. And this uses Mike's weird bring everything up in one train and then split it out system. So that'll be brought in here, drop off, pass down the belts over here. We'll go into this warehouse over here, and it seems like we've caught up. So it is currently that that the weird system, despite being weird, apparently works well enough for the time being. Uh, we've now got so we've got uh, 78 stacks now, which means when this train goes and comes back, it won't be able to fill itself up again. But there'll probably be some more lithium chloride arrived by then. And the reason he did that is because this lithium chloride is needed over in the biological science area and it's dropped off into a station here where it gets passed through up here and is needed for making the genetic data here and also further up for making the uh Oh, more genetic data further up. So he needs quite he needs quite a bit for making for, for making those because those are used for quite a lot of things. So he needs a nice healthy supply of that. And, and the system we had before was insufficient. And I'm a little bit curious as to what's changed here because we have a system here that, that that is running and is running very very nicely. But he's turned off this bottom system around here that was previously producing large quantities of lithium and um, and, and presumably at least some lithium chloride. To be fair, the system down here at the bottom is a bit of a mess, so maybe he just took one look at it and went, I don't want to deal with that, I don't want to try and expand it, I'm just going to build it again, nicely and neatly, where it doesn't have all kinds of um, bad decisions that were made due to expanding it a bit, a bit at a time over the over the course of the last however many streams. So he's, uh, yeah, I, th I suspect that's probably what's ha happened. So he's gone, rather than, rather than trying to upgrade this and make it run nicely, I'll just rebuild it properly, um, and maybe he's used, no, he hasn't used more advanced machines. I'm slightly puzzled as to why this is working, oh, I see, it's working so much better because he's put wide area beacon twos with speed module sixes in uh, so these machines are now running at uh, seven and a half times their normal speed whereas down here because we're using basic beacons uh, and uh, the electrolysis plants are only running at uh, double their normal speed so yeah okay that explains how he's managed to get away with such a smaller build and have more output than, than all of this mess down here so this was yes this is just a bit outdated although that said down here i've got a wide area beacon one uh with modules speed module threes in and that's allowing these machines to run at uh, almost five times their normal speed so this isn't too bad um however it this was this whole system was far more focused on producing the lithium than the lithium chloride so also maybe it was maybe it was too difficult to get the lithium chloride out from places like this where it's the end of a belt um so it just seemed it just probably just seemed a lot easier to build a new system like this and i can't argue with that this makes a lot of sense it seems it looks like it's working very nicely so you know if it's broke because it hasn't been um up to, because it's made out with old technology and has turned into a bit of a spaghetti nonsense uh then you might as well fix it by building out a neater version of it over on big red well, I've been uh, grouching a little bit about the uh, the shortage of vitalic reagents, and so Mark has been hard at work with that as well. So previously we had this system here, which takes in uh, core chunks down here, uh, pulverizes them down, gets the vitamelange out, then and then it goes through the processing stages up here until it comes out as the vitamelange spice. That's then fed up into here, where it's then processed on into vitamelange extract, that then goes off to be made into all of the other vita more advanced vita products. Great. So that I mean that's working quite nicely. I think Mark has got every single um, core seam on the planet with extremely long belts. You can see why we call them Mark belts. But despite having every core seam on the planet, he's still not pulling in the, the uh, vitamelange fast enough to make to keep everything happy. So he then came in and he put in this system here, which is the same sort of thing, except it's missing the uh, core pulverization stage because it's running from uh, vitamelange mines. So we're bringing in vitamelange ore from mines on these belts. It goes into a warehouse here to provide some buffer into the machines over here. And these are processing it exactly the same way. So we've got the, uh, the vita spice coming out at the top. Great. 
there's still not enough. So he's put in another set of all of that, and that's everything, including the including the making the bio, whatever this stuff, the biomatter, that can be then passed through here, and it is used in, I don't know which stage, but it is used in there somewhere. So he's got more, more, more um, Vitamelange mines set up like this one that are feeding into now into another storage container, and then into all of the uh, processing facilities here. So we've now got an extra maybe 50%, because we've now got three processing facilities, as long as the core mining can keep up, and I think it can, because these belts do look fairly full. So we've now got 50% more than we had coming out before, that's all flowing up into here, as we say, and then along here we can see these various belts running at different speeds. We've got the um, uh, we've got two purple belts going in here, and I believe this is making the vit the vitalic reagent. Yes, there we go. And you can see there is nearly half a blue belt of that coming out. Call it a third of a blue belt. That's that's a decent amount. I'm, that, that's that's doing well. Um, and then over here we've still got another blue belt coming over here, bringing the vitamelange extract over to be made into acid and into um, bi bio scrubbers because we do still need those in fairly significant quantities. As you can tell by this tank over here being essentially empty. Uh, and that's because, well, that's because a lot of it's being pumped off this way to be put into barrels. And so if we look all the way over here where everything's being loaded up into the train to go to the spaceship, well, you can see that the, the Vitalic reagent is, of course, flowing through solidly because, well, it always does because we get through so, so much of it. The spice and the reagent have both stopped because we seem to have, we, we've apparently got uh, enough of those in, in the system. Uh, and, and same with the, the acid and the scrubbers. So those, are, the, those four are all okay. So we've just got, we're filling up buffers probably. That's why there's still some of those being produced. Uh, but we've now, we're now mostly just feeding through the, uh, the, the reagent and also the epoxy. We do need quite a lot of epoxy as well. So those those two are flowing through into here and then going into the train to be taken up. The only thing is though, as, as you've seen before, the amount of actual stuff you get through, the amount of stuff you actually want is relatively small compared to the amount of miscellaneous, all the other, all the other types of junk that come through. Still, we will at least be able to use this methane ice somewhere. I think I know where, where, where we can put that. Up in space, it looks like a spaceship has just arrived because we are currently actively unloading the uh, all of the um, things like the, the rare metals and the and the vulcanite and, and so on, all of this stuff that's been brought over. And that's just finished. So now we can start loading up from these warehouses into the into the ship. And these warehouses, well, the, the warehouse were probably about half full when they started loading. We can see we've already got almost 100 stacks per um, per warehouse over here. And there's nearly, and so there's gonna be, actually, we're gonna be near, nearly two thirds full by the time this has just passed over what's in these warehouses. So that's doing really well. We've got, we've produced a lot of stuff while the ship was just flying back and forth. And so we now, we, it, well, it shouldn't take too long to fill the rest of it up. However, once again, that is because compared the amount of um, the amount of actual stuff we want that comes through compared to the amount of um, miscellaneous junk that comes through is not as high as I would like it to be, should we say. So you can see there's an enormous amount of wood in this in this uh, warehouse already. And okay, granted, there is still quite a lot of this stuff to pass through. It's not as bad as I, it might not, it's not really as bad as I'm making out. We are make, we are bringing over a lot of reagent, a lot of extract whenever we do fly the ship across, but there is a lot of byproducts with this with this uh, system as well. But never mind. As long as the ship keeps flying, the train keeps running, everything keeps going, I think we're probably going to be okay. We'll just have to keep a bit of an eye on it and maybe, well, hopefully we won't need to expand it again because it's getting a little silly. <laughs> Um, hopefully this will actually be enough, but we, I guess we shall have to wait and see. And right, I think this is a good place to end the end the, uh, the video. I've been recording for almost 50 minutes. Uh, the Granted, I'll, I'll cut a fair amount of that out because there's a bit, bit of time thinking about what I was going to say next and, and, you know, watching trains bumbling around and that sort of thing. Uh, so this will be the end of this video. I will be making some more about what we got up to last week. Uh, don't worry about that. Uh, never fear, there's always more to say. So there's pl plenty more to talk about. Some of it spoilery, some of it not. So I hope you'll be coming back for the, the rest of the videos. I haven't decided exactly when I'm going to release them yet because I won't be around next week because it's show week. So there'll be no stream. And, no, and therefore no videos to be made from the streams during next week. So I would like to still keep the channel a little bit active because I don't like I don't like it dying, as you saw when I went away on holiday. I kept a, at least a little bit of activity going. But I won't be around to do a stream or to, and therefore I won't be able to make quite the same sort of factorio videos from that. And I'll also be very, very busy in the evenings. So I can't make any, I'm not going to make any promises, but I am going to try and find a way to sort of spread the videos out a little bit so there's a decent amount of content on the channel. So keep make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any of that. And I will, of course, be back the Monday after. That's the 20th of May when the uh, the normal streams will resume and then of course on the 22nd there'll be a satisfactory stream as well. So uh, yeah, make sure you stick around for all of that. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.